Good Wednesday evening to you here on the 13th day of April 2022. It's weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks to everyone who's uh, gone ahead and followed me on my new Facebook page. If you've been watching Weather Geeks over the last couple of weeks, you know of my frustrations with my old Facebook page. I accidentally removed myself as an admin of the page, and I've had no success getting Facebook to uh, kind of check the box to make me an, uh, an admin on my page so I can post again and that sort of thing. So ran out of patience with that process and just started a new page this week. If you have not followed me there just yet, encourage you to do so. Uh, search for Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm on Facebook. Uh, Eric Wilhelm WFMJ is something you can also search for. And some of you are watching this video on a link from Facebook. And so again, those of you who have followed me, uh, uh, thank you, and if you are a longtime follower on Facebook and have not done so yet, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and follow me on the new page. Uh, if if things are status quo and we never get access to the old page, this will just be the the forever page. If for some reason Facebook does start responding to me and reinstates me as the admin on my old page, I'll probably go back to that old page because it had 28,000 followers on it, um, and starting from scratch is no fun, but... Uh, uh, I'm not real optimistic that's going to happen. So anyway, new home on Facebook. Uh, welcome everyone, and uh, well, welcome to the warmest day of 2022. The uh, 74 we had this afternoon beat our previous mark for the year so far by a degree. We had 73 back in uh, late March. Uh, 74 today. Now for the month, when you factor in the highs and the lows, we're still running about two degrees cooler than the average. And cooler air compared to the average will return by the upcoming weekend. But that 74 sure felt nice today, despite some clouds around and even some raindrops from time to time on a few occasions. Now, Pittsburgh had their first 80 degree temperature of the year so far. 81 in Pittsburgh, wheeling at 80 this afternoon. New Philly got close to 80. Zanesville also knocking on the door of 80 earlier on today. We did not hit 80 here, and that's not all that unusual. When we look back at the last 10 years, the first 80 degree temperature of the season, wide variation here. Two years ago, we had a, uh, a cool stretch and, and only yeah, it took, I should say, until May 18th until we had our first 80, but back in 2012 in that ridiculously warm March, we had an 80 degree temperature on March 20th. The 30 year average date of the first 80 of the season is April 22nd. So not having an 80 through April 13th is, is really not all that unusual. Although again, you didn't have to travel too far to the south to find an 80 degree temperature earlier on today. All right, showers have been coming and going. We even had some thunder here and there uh, late this morning. Uh, another band of showers pushing in as of this recording, a little after 7 p.m. Uh, as I've been talking about this week, severe weather is not much of a concern here locally. It's been a big ticket severe weather day once again across the lower Ohio River Valley, the mid-Mississippi Valley as well. All these red boxes are tornado watches from extreme southern Indiana through western Kentucky, western Tennessee. Almost the entire state of Mississippi is still under a tornado watch early this evening. Not hard to find our cold front, is it? It's right out here. Uh, pretty good temperature drop on the other side of that front. In fact, uh, again, it's been cold enough for snow over the last 24 hours and quite a bit of it up across the northern plains. Everything's going to weaken, though, coming east, it looks like, as we go through the night. So the severe weather risk remains kind of elevated in places like Cincinnati, Louisville, Indianapolis. But once this line pushes into Ohio, there's not going to be much lightning and thunder with it left uh, as we go uh, deep into the night and into tomorrow morning. But we'll get a few rounds of showers, one coming through early this evening, then a break. Another round probably after midnight, localized downpour, a clap of thunder, possible. I don't think we'll have severe weather. And then the last of the shower activity probably pushes through just after daybreak tomorrow morning. We'll be drying out from west to east as we go into the 8 and 9 o'clock hours on our Thursday morning. Now, temperatures will be a little bit tricky tomorrow. Now, if you're an early morning riser, if you're up and about at 5 or 6 a.m., it's still going to be very balmy, upper 50s to around 60. If you don't head out until mid-morning, it'll be quite a bit cooler instead of upper 50s to around 60 be in the middle and upper 40s in a lot of areas. So temperatures will kind of bottom out around mid-morning. We'll have a later than normal low temperature for the day. Usually our low occurs around sunrise, right? Well, this will be a few hours after sunrise. And then temperatures will rebound pretty nicely in the afternoon with full, strong mid-April sunshine. We'll make our way into the upper 50s to around 60. So actually a great afternoon tomorrow. No, it's not going to be 74 like today. But hey, 60 degrees is still a little bit above average. Hardly a cloud in the sky tomorrow afternoon. We'll notice a few more clouds in the sky on Friday, especially as we get into the afternoon. Might even be a sprinkle or a shower as nearby as kind of the I-90 corridor, Ashtabula over to Cleveland, 
I doubt much of that gets down into our area until later Friday night into Saturday morning. That's when our shower chances will increase again with this next cold front. Now, this next cold front will have a little more of a, a, a push of cool air coming with it as we go into the weekend, meaning we're back below average for Saturday and for Easter Sunday. Opening day, or should I say opening night? Kind of rare for opening day to be a night game, but uh, the Guardians making their debut at Progressive Field Friday evening, and it's a, a 7.05 first pitch. Sprinkle or a shower is going to be possible all evening. I don't think it's enough to, to make for a, a delay or a rain out Friday evening. Um, but uh, temperatures, man, this is kind of what you'd expect on, a, on an evening in early, early to mid-April. Temperatures upper 40s to around 50. It could be a lot colder. could be warmer too, but uh, at least it won't be snowing. Easter forecast has not changed much. Uh, I think the day will feature some sun, a mix of sun and clouds. We might even have a stray flurry early on. If you're heading off to early morning services Sunday morning, I guess I wouldn't be shocked if you encountered a snow flurry. But the afternoon should be uneventful. Just bundle up for those Easter egg hunts. Now, the 6 to 10 day period from the 19th through the 23rd, no surprise if you've been uh, following my videos of late. I've been talking about this cool weather sticking around through a good chunk of next week. But beyond that... As we go into the final week or so of April, this is more like it. This is a better looking map. I think some 60s and probably some 70s are in our future in this period. Probably starting around maybe the 22nd, 23rd and taking us through at least the 27th, 28th. Does this mean spring's going to lock in and we're going to have 70s from here on out? No. Um, some of the modeling beyond even this 8 to 14 day period, we're talking about days like 14 to 21. So in other words, rolling it forward into May. Some of the modeling is showing uh, a cool down once again early in May, but let's not uh, sleep on the fact that uh, we're going to have a pretty nice stretch uh, of temperatures during that last week of April, especially after a prolonged chilly stretch from this weekend into a good chunk of next week. Again, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Wednesday night. You can check out a fresh edition of this video, same time, same place, on Thursday.